Hey everybody, I'm really excited to share this video with you because these are some really useful synthesis techniques and I had to discover a lot of them on my own. There are a lot of great introductory videos for additive synthesis, but this video is meant to be more comprehensive and practical in nature. Basically, additive synthesis is the process of increasing the amplitude of different frequencies in a sound to get different timbres. We can do that using a lot of different techniques, but in this video, we're going to cover three of them. The first one is wavetable editing. The second one is frequency modulation. And then the last one is with distortion. Let's start with wavetable editing. I introduced this concept in part two of this series. If I click on the pencil icon here, it brings me to the wavetable editor. Here I can see all the harmonics of my sound. Since the default waveform is a saw wave, we see every harmonic. Let's delete all the harmonics above the fundamental by right clicking above the fundamental and choosing clear right. Now I have a sine wave. Each time I add a harmonic, I'm simply adding a sine wave at a new frequency. So by that logic, a saw wave is simply a collection of sine waves at the frequencies of the harmonic series. And white noise is like a dense series of sine waves at every frequency, not just those within the harmonic series. From the wavetable editor, I can click and drag up or down on any harmonic to change its amplitude. This is how I made my Hammond organ preset. The process of adding harmonics to a sine wave is similar to the process of changing the tone of an organ. An organ has draw bars that correspond to the harmonic series. To get a different tone, you pull out those draw bars to turn up the amplitude of their harmonics. The wavetable editor is really useful when you want to have granular control over the amplitude of specific harmonics. For example, I made this Skidaw Stones preset by meticulously matching the harmonics of my preset to the harmonics of a sample. I outlined this process in my steel drum tutorial. However, in this sound, I noticed some frequencies that were not in the harmonic series. In other words, they were inharmonic, which happens a lot with metallic sounds. The sample played a D5, but what I observed in the spectral analyzer was D5, F sharp 6, C sharp 7, F7, and more. I can get the D5 and F sharp 6 from the second and fifth harmonics of D4. To add in those extra frequencies, I added in an oscillator one semitone lower and added in the eighth and tenth harmonics. Now when I play a D4, oscillator two plays C sharp 7 and F7. I could have also simply added these two frequencies separately by using two separate oscillators set to sine waves, but this method saved me an oscillator in case I wanted to add even more frequencies. Using the wavetable editor is very useful for adding or subtracting specific frequencies to a sound. If we want to add frequencies according to a specific pattern, frequency modulation or distortion are good choices. I outline the basics of frequency modulation in part two of this series. Frequency modulation usually refers to modulating the coarse pitch of one oscillator with another. The oscillator being modulated is called the carrier and the oscillator doing the modulation is called the modulator. Usually the modulator doesn't produce any sound on its own, like an LFO. However, when the carrier is being modulated enough, you start to hear new frequencies added to the sound. Frequency modulation, often abbreviated FM, was a very popular sound in the late 80s and early 90s. To understand FM, it helps to understand how the FM synthesizers of that time worked. In popular FM synths of that era, such as the Yamaha DX7, you only could use sine waves. However, the DX7 had six oscillators. These oscillators could be used as modulators or carriers depending on the algorithm the user chose. The DX7 had 32 available algorithms shown here. The numbers in the boxes refer to different oscillators. The oscillators at the bottom of each diagram make sound, while the oscillators above are only modulators, like an LFO and Vital. The lines show which oscillators are modulating which. For example, in algorithm 28, oscillators 1, 3, and 6 make sound. 
oscillator 1 is being modulated by oscillator 2, shown by the line above it. Oscillator 5 is modulating itself, a process called feedback, denoted by this box. The resulting waveform is modulating oscillator 4, and that resulting waveform is modulating oscillator 3. Over here, oscillator 6 isn't being modulated by anything. It's just a sine wave. As you can imagine, there are a lot of possibilities with 6 oscillators and 32 algorithms. Another important thing to note, the coarse pitch of the oscillators in a DX7 works differently than vital. In the DX7 and many FM synthesizers, the coarse pitch moves the frequency to different harmonics of the harmonic series. For example, a coarse pitch value of 2 means the frequency is one octave above the key pressed, since that is the frequency of the second harmonic. Now let's use frequency modulation in vital. For oscillator 1, I'm going to choose a sine wave from basic shapes. Now I can add frequency modulation from here. We can choose any other oscillator, including the sampler, as a modulator. Now in order to hear the difference, I have to turn on the oscillator I chose as a modulator, in this case oscillator 2. By default, that modulator will be making sound. If I don't want that, I can turn down the level to zero, making an oscillator only function as a modulator. Now if I change the coarse pitch of oscillator 2, I'll get different sounds. To change the coarse pitch to different harmonics, like in a traditional FM synth, set the wavetable to harmonic series found under factory. To snap between partials instead of blending between them, click on the pencil icon. Where it says spectral blend, click and choose none. Now I can get different harmonics added to my sound by changing the harmonic frequency of my modulator. Here's a very helpful tip for frequency modulation. To add every harmonic to your sound, set the frequency of your modulator to the frequency of your carrier like this. Here I'm adding the second, then third, and fourth harmonics. If I keep adding more frequency modulation, the amplitude of these harmonics will change, but every harmonic is added, like in a saw wave. However, if I set the coarse pitch of the modulator to the second harmonic, I'm adding only odd-ordered harmonics to my sound, like a square or a triangle wave. Now if I set the coarse pitch of the modulator to the third harmonic, I'm adding harmonics but skipping every third harmonic, like a pulse wave at one-third width. From here, starting at the fourth harmonic, FM will add pairs of harmonics. The higher the partial of the modulator, the higher those harmonics are. More FM will add more pairs of harmonics. If a modulator has high frequencies, such as a saw wave, FM will add higher frequencies to the sound. For example, I can make something like a square wave by frequency modulating a sine wave with a saw wave an octave higher. That's because the frequency of my modulator is at the second harmonic, adding odd-ordered harmonics to the sound. Therefore, I can make my sine wave sound like a saw wave by frequency modulating the sine wave with a saw wave at the same frequency. It's important to know that the phase relationship of the oscillators matters. I usually turn off phase randomization, and here I've flipped the phase of oscillator 2 to match oscillator 1. The results get even more complex when the carrier is also a complex waveform. For example, frequency modulating a saw wave with another saw wave is similar to using the sync effect found here. Now let's combine wavetable editing with FM to create some unique sounds. Let's set both carrier and modulator to sine waves. Then let's add in some random harmonics to the modulator. Now we get an interesting growl effect when I turn up the FM amount. We also don't have to frequency modulate from a modulator that's harmonically aligned with our carrier. One of the most famous presets from the DX7 can be created by frequency modulating from an inharmonic modulator. Here we have FM from a modulator 22 semitones away which doesn't exist in the harmonic series. 
As a result, we get inharmonic overtones, similar to the sound of a bell or like the skidaw stones preset from earlier. The possibilities with FM are endless and experimentation goes a long way. To summarize FM, a carrier is an oscillator being modulated by another oscillator or sample called a modulator. If the frequency of the modulator is aligned with a harmonic of the carrier, harmonics will be added to the carrier. For example, when the frequency is the same, all harmonics can be added. If the frequency of the modulator is at the second harmonic of the carrier, odd-ordered harmonics can be added. If the frequency of the modulator does not align with the harmonic series of the carrier, inharmonic frequencies will be added to the carrier. This can be useful for creating metallic sounds like the Taco Bell. The last additive technique I'm going to talk about is distortion. The easiest way to observe an additive technique is to try it out on a sine wave. So let's put distortion on a sine wave. As soon as I turn the distortion on, I get some subtle frequencies added to my sine wave. We can see them in the spectral analyzer in the advanced tab. These frequencies are the third and fifth harmonics. Let's see what happens when I turn up the drive of the distortion. You'll hear and see that the distortion is adding odd-ordered harmonics. The amplitude and number of these harmonics depends on the drive or the input gain. Input gain is simply the level of the sound before the distortion. If I turn up the level of the oscillator, I get more distortion in the form of louder and more numerous odd-ordered harmonics. Distortion will add odd-ordered harmonics as long as this wave shape is symmetrical. By symmetrical, I mean that this side is a mirror image of this side. In vital, the first four types of distortion are all symmetrical waveforms, meaning they will add odd-ordered harmonics to the sound. Their different shapes will determine the amplitude of those harmonics. If the curve is asymmetrical, as is the case with something like tube distortion, both odd and even ordered harmonics are added. Unfortunately, at the moment, Vital doesn't have tube distortion or a similar asymmetrical distortion curve. However, I show you some free plugins you can use in my dubstep bass video. The first four distortion types really shine when a preset's amplitude changes you get a sense that the audio signal is bursting at the seams. This can be highlighted with tremolo, like in this dubstep bass preset, with chorus, like this cyberpunk bass preset, with a phaser, like this bass preset from my Patreon, or any other way of changing the amplitude of frequencies, such as unison detune. The last two distortion types limit the sample rate and the bit depth of our sound. You can think of these like the resolution of the sound. If you closely examine a curve on a computer screen, or if you have a low resolution image, you'll see that the curve isn't actually a curve, but a series of jagged pixels. They're usually small enough that it appears like a curve. The same is true of digital audio. The sample rate and bit depth are usually so high that you can't perceive those audio pixels. However, if we reduce the sample rate or bit depth enough, it will have an audible effect on the audio. Bit depth determines the number of amplitudes our sound can be. Therefore, crushing the bit depth will also raise the noise floor. In Vital, if I set the mode of distortion to bit crush, Increasing the drive reduces the bit depth. That means the higher the drive, the louder a sound has to be in order to make any sound at all. Unlike traditional forms of distortion, like soft clipping or hard clipping, bit crushing is the most noticeable with the least input gain. The closer the level is to the noise floor, the more distorted the sound is. To demonstrate, I made two presets with the same amount of bit crushing. One has the input gain cranked up using five envelopes and all the macros. Then the master gain is turned way down to compensate. You'll notice the one with the input gain turned way up 
barely sounds distorted while the other one sounds very distorted. On the other hand, sample rate reduction works differently. The effect of sample rate reduction doesn't depend on amplitude. It depends on frequency. Lower notes will have less distortion because if you think about it, a slower wave is bigger relative to the size of the sample. You can think of sample rate as being like the horizontal resolution of the sound wave. If you want to affect the waveform in a similar way to bit crushing or sample rate reduction without depending on amplitude or frequency, try the quantize option on the voice page found here. In addition to the distortion from the distortion module, we also get distortion from filters. Each filter has its own type and amount of distortion that I'll let you discover for yourself. The amount of that distortion is controlled by either the drive or input gain. It's important to take advantage of this type of distortion for polyphonic presets. That simply means presets that allow more than one note to play at a time. This is important because the voice page applies to each voice or note individually. Therefore, the distortion of the filters on the voice page will only depend on the amplitude of one note. If I use distortion or filter distortion on the effects page, it applies to all the notes being played. Listen to how two sine wave notes sound with a lot of distortion being applied on the effects page. Now listen to two sine wave notes with a lot of distortion being applied on the voice page. There are times you'll want one versus the other. To summarize distortion in vital, all types except for sample rate depend on input gain. The amount of that input gain will determine which odd ordered harmonics are added and the amplitude of those harmonics. Sample rate reduction depends on frequency with higher frequencies being more distorted. Different filter types also provide distortion. The filters on the voice page only apply to each voice individually, which makes distortion more predictable for keys and pads. To summarize this video, we talked about three different additive techniques. We talked about wavetable editing, frequency modulation, and distortion. They all have their own use cases. For example, wavetable editing is great when you want granular control over your sound. You can turn up the amplitude or turn down the amplitude of any harmonic you want. Frequency modulation is great when you want to add in harmonics according to a specific pattern. For example, if you only want to add in um, odd-ordered harmonics or if you want to add in every harmonic and you don't want it to be dependent on amplitude. If you do want it to be dependent on amplitude, distortion is very useful. Uh, sample rate reduction will depend on the frequency of your sound. Uh, most of those distortions uh, in vital will be adding in odd ordered harmonics and the amplitude of those harmonics and which of those odd ordered harmonics show up uh, will depend on the shape of that wave shaping tool. Uh, wave shaping is just another word for distortion. So anyways, I hope you found this helpful. I highly recommend that you experiment with these techniques and see what kinds of things you can come up with. Uh, the possibilities are really endless and this is just scratching the surface. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.